This video is looking at the treatment of sciatica with massage. Sciatica is an umbrella term given to any sort of pain that's caused by irritation or compression of the sciatic nerve. This can include leg pain, sometimes accompanied by tingling, numbness or weakness. It originates in the lower back, travels through the buttock and down through the large sciatic nerve behind the thigh radiating down to below the knee. Sciatica isn't a diagnosis in itself, although it's often used as one. It's a symptom of an underlying problem. The sciatic nerve is the largest single nerve in the body and it's made up of individual root nerves that branch out from the spine starting at L3. They combine to form the sciatic nerve. The nerve then branches out into each leg and they supply the various parts of the leg, the, the thigh, the calf, the foot, the toes, etc. with nerve. There's a lot more detail of this in the textbook. Sciatica happens when something irritates or compresses this nerve. It's important to differentiate, differentiate which type of sciatica the client's suffering from. Axial sciatica is where the, the nerve root is impinged in the lumbar spine and appendicular sciatica is where the nerve root entrapment is elsewhere in the nerve, not in the nerve root. You might hear talk of a herniated or slipped disc. This is an axial sciatica. The movement of the vertebrae puts pressure on the nerve causing the sciatic symptoms. It's not the only axical sciatica, degenerative disc disease, which irritates the root nerve and causes sciatica, lumbar spine stenosis, that causes sciatica due to a narrowing of the spinal canal, canal are both um, other more serious problems. There can be irritation of the nerve from adjacent bones, tumours, muscle tightness, internal bleeding, infections, injury, and for some women, pregnancy as well. Even a herniated disc will often fix itself in around six weeks, but they might be a painful six weeks. Red flags to look for when you need to refer to a medical practitioner or the emergency department, unexplained weight loss, any loss of control of bladder or bowel, if the pain or symptoms increase rather than decrease, or if the pain is too severe for self-management. The second type of sciatica is appendicular sciatica. Appendicular sciatica occurs when the sciatic nerve is trapped somewhere else and not in the spine. By far the biggest culprit is the piriformis muscle. About 70% of cases come from here. Appendicular sciatica is characterised by increased pain from sitting, walking upstairs or inclines, the direct pressure of sexual intercourse for women, or with resisted active external rotation of the femur, so something you might come across in the gym in particular. This can be tested by asking your client to sit towards the end of the chair, lift the leg of the affected leg with a knee bend as far towards the chest as is comfortable. If this increases the pain, it indicates that the problem is more likely to be in the piriformis or possibly the hamstrings even. But if in doubt, ask the client to get medically checked out. Let's look at specific contraindications for this condition. Massage is contraindicated if any of the following symptoms occur, accompany the sciatica. Weight loss, loss of control of bladder or bowel, if the pain or symptoms increase rather than de decreases, and if the pain is too severe for self-management. Any of those, go to see a medical practitioner. So what treatments can we offer? It does depend on the type of sciatica. If you aren't sure it's the simpler form, appendicular, then err on the side of caution and treat as though it's axial. The main difference is the position in which the client's in and the depth of the treatment. Our starting point for this work is the feet. So if you haven't done that detailed work around foot and leg massage, you need to do that first. For sciatica, you need to make sure you do some really detailed work on the feet, especially around the big and little toe. When I reflect on the sciatic treatments I do in my clinic, probably 80% of people will have extremely tight toes, often very limited movement in the toes. If you release those toes, you can start to release the sciatica and you can normally get incredibly quick results from this. When you think about it, it makes sense. If somebody's clenching their toes, perhaps working or perched up on their toes as they sit at the desk, this means the calves are tight, which means the quads are tight, the hamstrings are tight, which means that the piriformis and the glutes are tight. So we're treating the tension at its source. As we come now to work with our, our work with a client, we're going to show the treatment in two different ways. The reason we work differently is that we don't want to twist the spine for somebody with axial sciatica. I'm going to assume that you've completed both the foot and the leg work first and so we'll start our demonstration from that point. So I'm going to show you it face down first. So remember axial sciatica face down. To do this I'm going to bring Daniel's leg out towards me. I'm going to support his knee as he does it 
and we're just going to drop the foot down. Now some people will get to there, that's as far as you will get with that because their hips are so tight. If that's the case, just support this leg as you work because you're going to be using your elbow here into the, uh, into the glutes. But for, for somebody with very flexible hips, maybe somebody who does a lot of yoga or like Daniel for karate, you, this hip will just, that leg will rest there quite naturally without you having to hold it up. So just play it by ear with, um, with each client. We're going to work, we're here at the edge of the sacrum. So you can feel for the edge of the sacrum. And we're working the kind of squishy area, for want of a better, a better description, between the head of the femur and the edge of the sacrum. So this is the kind of gentler way to do it, and this is with axial sciatica, where we're not sure if there's been any compromise to the, sp the spine. This is the safer work way to work. So if anybody's got any spinal damage, they've had any spinal fusion, work this way. Otherwise, you can work the side way. I'm placing my elbow in between the edge, so I'm away from the edge of the, the sacrum, but I'm also away from the head of the femur. And there's almost kind of a natural path in there. If you're not sure if this, if this work is new to you, just practice on a friend first so that you can, you can kind of get a feel for where you are. You'll feel that there's an area where there's resistance, but you can actually sink in so that you know you're working on muscle. And as I just feel that, I can feel there's a little bit of tension here because it's pushing back at me as I'm pressing down. There's a little more here. And as I get to this point, it's really kind of resisting. So this is where I know that the, the tension is. That tension carries on out here and up here. So even though Daniel's got very flexible hips, there's still tension in there that would probably allow him even more movement of his, of his hips. So I am going to just place my elbow in there. You can see I've turned my arm because if I'm, if I'm that way around, it's quite a big kind of area of elbow. But by turning my arm inwards, it's a smaller area. It's a very precise movement. My hand is relaxed. I'm not kind of gripping my hand like that. And my fingers are pointing away from me. So those who work with energy, you're pointing somebody else's energy away from you. So you stay nice and relaxed as you do it. I'm going to ask Daniel just to take some nice, deep, natural breaths. And on his out breath, I'm just going to push in. So I've just increased my depth. And you can see I'm, using, I'm just using his foot as a bit of a lever because by keeping that muscle moving, it limits any resistance to the move. So I'm doing that maybe five or six times in that one spot. And then I'm coming off gently. I'm being careful that as I come off, I'm not pushing off. I'm not kind of pushing down in order to stand up. And I'm moving maybe one and a half centimetres up. And the same thing again. And I don't need to give Daniel any cues to breathe because he's done this before. So he's breathing very nicely. Now, some clients will shout as you do this work. It can be challenging. Um, you'll have clients who will want that really deep work and know that it's kind of like a good pain. It's like that hurts, but don't stop because you can tell it's releasing the hip. You can see I'm just supporting the foot here. I'm not putting any pressure on, I'm not gripping hard. And depending on the size of the person's hip, you might get anywhere between three, five or six kind of points as you move that one and a half centimetre at a time. Don't worry if you only move one centimetre or if you move two, it's, it's just a, it's an average. And you can see on each one, I'm kind of doing this gentle pumping action of the foot in order to release it. And because I'm doing it a few times, it saves me then going back into a point that I've already been in because that will then become a bit tender. I'm not just then abandoning the leg, I'm supporting the knee, I'm bringing the leg back up, laying the foot down and checking that my draping's in place. So I'm only uncovering what I need to uncover to work. Then we'll look at the same thing in side position. So we've now moved to, uh, to working with our client in the side position. If I just show you Daniel's legs for a minute, you can see the bottom leg is straight and the top one is bent up. So it's a recovery position for any, um, any first aiders amongst you. 
and then I'm going to ask Daniel to shuffle back so that he's right on the edge of the table. What I usually say is come back until you come into contact with me. So you can see I deliberately position myself right on the edge of the table and then I know that Daniel's not going to fall off the table but that I've got him into the position that, that I need. We'll make sure that leg is up. Now I'll show you this again on the other leg just as to in terms of how to get this position but you're basically you're following the femur. So you get to the head of the femur here and then it's as if this part of your hand is at the head of the femur and depending on the, the size of your, your client, if you've got a very big client you would do it on an extended finger, with Daniel I'm doing it on a curled finger, but what you're looking for is to be the midway point between the edge of the sacrum and the top of the femur. So this bit of my hand is going on the top of the femur and I'm curling my fingers out and I'm finding three points. Now you will find these very naturally eventually and you can do the prodding you know if you prod you'll find that there's a soft area soft area really resistant area then another soft area another soft area resistant area soft soft resistant and it's those resistant areas that you're looking for so they're the three points that we're going to work here this as i say is it's much deeper work again practice it on somebody if it's new to you practice on friends or family member i will talk my clients through this I will ask them to take a deep breath and explain that I am going to drop into the area on their out breath. That they then need to let me know when it's as deep as they want it to be. So I'm, I'm using their, it's their depth guide. And I'm then going to hold it to that position. I'm not going to come off, I'm not going to go any deeper, I'm just going to stay in that position. I'm then going to drop down. Into that, uh, into that area of tension and I'm just going to hold it. It might take 30 seconds, it might take a minute. For my client it's going to feel like I've just lifted up, like I've released the pressure but I haven't actually changed my pressure at all, it's because the muscle is releasing. So I'm going to start with the middle point. Let's just relax that down a little bit for me, thank you. And you can see now why I've brought my client right to the end because I, as I apply this force he's going to go forwards so I don't want to end up pushing him off the table. So I'm just going to support the leg here. My arm is up here for two reasons. One, it's out of the way, but also if a client kind of jerks upwards because their hips are tighter than they thought, you're not going to get hit by their elbow. So you're kind of protecting yourself as well. So Daniel, on a nice deep breath, I'm going to drop into this. Let me know when it's as deep as you want to go. Fine. So I'm just going to hold it there. So you're always respecting the client's depth, you're never going deeper than they want to work. But it is a challenging move, so you do need to, to get some depth into it. And I'm just holding there, so I'm not putting any pressure on with that hand, I'm just stabilising myself. My hand's nice and relaxed at the top. I'm just holding this point and I can feel it starting to move under my elbow now. So I can feel the muscle starting to relax. Usually a client will feel it either around about the same time or shortly afterwards. So just let me know when that feels that I'm just leaning on it instead. Yeah, we're there. Yeah. So then again, I'm coming up carefully. I'm not pressing down in order to come up because that would be really mean. I'm now going to come to the bottom of those three points. You can go either way. It doesn't really matter which one you go to next. Um, I tend to come to the bottom one because I find the top one is often tight. So again, same position, I'm going to ask Daniel to take a nice deep breath and I'm going to drop down on the out breath and he'll tell me when it's deep enough. Okay. And I'm just going to hold it again. I'll often joke with my client that you know, I could just have a nice cup of tea in my hand while I'm, I'm waiting for this to release. Sometimes you'll feel the muscle almost kind of vibrate against your elbow and that's just as it's starting to release, it starts to let go. The muscle kind of pulses a little bit first. And I can feel that starting to go. I'm guessing Daniel will feel it fairly soon. Yeah, yeah. very good. So again, I'm coming back up slowly and I'm moving to that top point. You need to change position here because you're always heading as though you're heading into the bone. 
So if I, come, if I don't move my position, I'm going to skim across and I'm just going to hit the, the edge of his hip bone instead. So I'm moving around so that I'm still pointing downwards, kind of towards the, towards the femur. And again, I'm going to ask Daniel to take a nice deep breath. And I'm just going to drop down into it. That's good. So I've got my depth and I'm just, I'm just staying here. Important to keep a nice straight back while you're working so you don't damage your own back. Your strength from this and your movement from this really comes from your hips and from your legs. That one's releasing quite quickly now. That seems to be going quicker than the other ones. My client may disagree. Does that feel like That's it's starting fine. to release? Yeah, so again, coming straight up, not pushing down as you come up. So I'll just show you that position, the, um, the hand position for that from the other side. So just to show you that position again, we've got the line of the femur coming here, the bottom joint of my middle finger is going to align with the head of the femur and I'm just curling round. The edge of Daniel's sacrum is here, the femur is here, so I'm in that middle section. If I've got a much bigger client, I would simply just stretch out. If you've got a really big client, you might just have to estimate where the middle is and then go from that, that point there. 